Hey guys, I'm going to explain to you how to uh, process your lab data from the football kickoff lab using uh, vernier video physics and vernier graphical analysis. So I found uh, this wonderful video off of the internet somewhere of somebody tossing a tennis ball. It's a slow motion video. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do in um, vernier graphical analysis, which you've hopefully already downloaded, is uh, import your video. So that happens with that little plus sign up there. You can record a video straight within the app, but yours is already recorded in this case, so you're going to pick choose existing. Um, so I'm going to use this one that I was looking at moments ago that I found off of uh, the internet. Okay, and so um, the video starts with hang on now where am i oh here it goes it's going to start it's going to start going soon there goes the tennis ball oh my goodness look at it all right now um i need to back up in the video to uh, a moment when um the ball kind of first appears so let's try right about oh here come on there we go all right you can advance frame by frame using this little button down here with the circle and the one around it. All right, and I'll go ahead and take this right here as my first moment. And so the first bit that you have to do is getting the data points to record. Um, now, if you're lucky, you can actually use the track function. Um, but if not, if, if you don't trust the, the tracking, uh, which I personally don't, it kind of often gets it a little bit wrong. Um, you use these crosshairs, okay? And so you, you know, in this case, I find the center of the ball, wherever I think that is. If you need to zoom in on the video, you can, right? That's not really necessary for what I'm doing here, but you might have to if you're, you know, if the ball is very far away in the video. And then I just poke in the direct middle of the crosshairs. Boop, oh, and then it automatically advances to the next slide. So I just do this a whole bunch of times. I don't know why it didn't advance that time. I just do that a whole bunch of times until I'm satisfied that I've got, you know, every single moment, every single data point that tells me where the ball has been. Okay, now this is obviously a somewhat repetitive process. Oops, now that particular data point was a goof. I messed up, it wasn't centered on the ball. So I'll show you the next thing. If you need to remove a data point, you poke your finger on the data point. And if you tell it select all, it will select all of them and you can delete them all and start from scratch, okay? Um, I don't really wanna do that, I just wanna delete that one data point, okay? Oops, didn't do it. Let's try that again. Delete, okay. And maybe go try it again, all right? All right, and now again, I said this is a repetitive process, so I'm just gonna cut to the end. All right, there's all the data points painstakingly gathered from the video. Hopefully you won't have that many data points, but it only took me like five minutes to track them all around. Um, and you can see it, on the screen, it looks kind of like actually a pretty good parabola. Um, if I, you know, play the video back, uh, starting, I don't know, from like here, you can see I relatively well matched like the center of the ball, right? I have some doubts about the exact quality of the video. I don't know, not in, in exact sampling rate or something, but as far as it goes, looks like it matches up pretty well with at least the video footage. Now. The next thing that you're going to need to do is get some kind of a scale in the video. So uh, in this case, the only thing I have for scale is the tennis ball itself. In your video, you will probably have uh, more than that, but just, you know, this is how you're going to get scale, okay? Um, so first, actually first, before we do scale, let's do the origin. Origin is going to be... Uh, in this case, the first moment that the ball appears on the screen. So I'm going to call that my origin. Okay, 
So wherever your ball starts from, that's the origin. All right, now these two things right here are how you tell it what the scale is. So let me fast forward a few frames so I get the tennis ball where I can use it. I said I have the tennis ball. That's the only thing I can use for scale. So I'm going to try to center one on the edge of the tennis ball and one on the exact opposite edge. And um, I don't know, let's say a tennis ball is like 30 centimeters across or something. I don't know. I don't have time to look it up. So here we go. That would be 0.3 meters. Okay, and there it is, entered in the scale. Uh, and so now when I make my graphs, it's going to scale everything according to whatever I said 30 pixels was. All right, now in your lab, you will probably set the scale a little bit differently. You're going to probably use for your scale how long you knew your kick was. So you measured um, delta X and delta Y, or sorry, you, you measure delta X and delta Z. And so the distance of the kick might have been, I don't know, 20.5 meters. And in that case, you know, you'd, you'd set your, um, you'd set your, you know, two ends to like, okay, there and there, here's where the football started, here's where it ended up, and you'd say that's 20.2 meters. All right, let me get my scale set back to what it was. And now I can go ahead and make my graphs, or at least check my graphs. Um, there's a little squiggly button up here in the corner there. Right, let me poke that again so you can see. Oh, look, there it is. And that looks kind of like a parabola. And all right, this here might look kind of like nonsense. Actually, this is pretty good data. We'll explain why in a minute. And all right, again, some some graphs. Okay, so our graphs look something like this. Your graphs are actually probably going to look, hopefully, something like these graphs here did. Okay, and so these are just really a way of you previewing what the whole thing ought to look like. All right, now all of this is the preliminary stuff that you're going to do in Vernier Video Physics. Probably this is the most time-consuming part. Where we go next, though, is to the Vernier Graphical Analysis app. So I'm going to export, with that button all the way up in the top right corner, the thing that I want to export is the data file. So just data file. Um, if up here, Vernier Graphical Analysis doesn't show up, it'll show up as just Graphical Analysis. Um, perhaps it shows up under Open In. If not, email it to yourself, and it will probably show up as an option opening from your email. Uh, in this case, this worked. There's graphical analysis right there. So I'll just open it up in graphical open it up in graphical. Alright, so again, if that doesn't work, at least not exactly the way you'd like it to, then you can just go ahead and um, send it to your email and open it from your email, and it will probably work. If you're having troubles getting it to open however you try it, then you should probably talk to me and uh, I'll, I'll see what I can work out. All right, now the next thing is we want to actually make graphs with trend lines. You can't make trend lines and quadratic fits uh, in Vernier, gra or, sorry, in Vernier video physics, but you can in graphical analysis. So first thing, first step, is poke that button up there and tell it, I want just one graph, one graph at a time, please. And right now it's graphing two things. I don't want two things. So I poke the axis and I tell it, look, I just want that to be Y. All right, and then I want, instead of time down here, why don't we make it X? So now that I have the two axes that I want for this graph, um, if all of my data is representative of a line or a parabola or whatever thing it is I'm graphing, now I can go down to this little button here in the corner and tell it apply curve fit and linear is a poor choice so I will poke that and drag it down to quadratic and quadratic seems to be a pretty good fit. All right and then that's all I really need to do for the y versus x graph. Now I just screenshot it 
and now it's in my photos and I can print it anytime I like. All right, now all the graphs you're going to make are um, not going to be quadratic, okay? So um, let me switch to a different graph. Um, the directions for the lab tell you the complete list, okay? So I'll go ahead and show you what they all ought to kind of look like. Uh, we did y versus x. Here's y versus t. All right, that one's also going to get a quadratic curve fit to it. All right, and then I would screenshot that one. Next, we want x versus t. All right, if you notice, whoa, it's graphing two things. Just That's because we have two things checked. I only want one thing at a time. Okay, so now x versus t is supposed to be linear, so I would apply a linear fit. That looks pretty linear. Next graph is x velocity versus time. Now, if yours looks like this, that's honestly pretty normal, but I want you to consider something about the scale here. The smallest value we've got is 0.7. The biggest one we've got is 1.3. That's not weird. Okay, um, th that just means it's all staying relatively within the same range there. And the reason we don't have a completely flat constant value is just because of me not doing a good job centering the cursor exactly on the tennis ball when I was getting my data points. So this is actually not that bad. If I want to use this to get uh, my x velocity, um, I could either apply a linear curve fit, which is uh, kind of terrible, actually. Okay, or the other way that you could actually go about getting that is, and you'll very seldom do this, but we could put view statistics, and it'll give me an average value, and that I can probably use. All right, now, if for some reason you only want to use some of your data points, instead of just going straight to poking this button, you can drag your finger across the screen and will only select particular ones. This might be a sensible thing to do if you notice that your uh, data, for example, includes um, you know, two or three moments when the ball is still on the ground or includes a bounce or something like that. So now when I do uh, a curve fit or statistics or anything else, then it's only going to use the data that I've selected. So now when I tell it view statistics, it comes up with a different mean value, um, slightly different, okay? And so now that would be a different value I'd use for my x velocity. All right. And then uh, y velocity versus time. Oops, hold on. I got to get rid of my x velocity. All right, same story as before. This one, my curve fit should probably be linear and... Hopefully my slope is negative 9.8. As you can see, the slope of this graph is not negative 9.8, which means I grossly overestimated the diameter of a tennis ball. So how close your slope is to negative 9.8 is going to depend entirely on how good your, um, your scale is. Um, so if your scale is bad, then the slope of this line will be not that close to negative 9.8. Clearly my scale is awful. Um, but if you're not exactly there, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so if you read the lab handout, it will tell you all of the graphs that you're supposed to make. I think I hit all of them, but in case I didn't, that is the final story for exactly which graphs you're supposed to produce for this. Screenshot them all, print them all, and that's most of your stuff for the lab right there. Okay, if you have any questions about getting this to work that this video did not resolve, please come see me in person and I will try to help you to the best of my ability. Thanks.